Hello friends, and welcome to the Legend of Zelda Majora's Mask Randomizer. Now this is something I've been looking forward to. I'm not sure if I've said this in any prior video, but Majora's Mask is not only my favorite Zelda game, but it is probably my favorite game of all time, so I've really been looking forward to this. And even better, we're playing it as a randomizer, so I don't even know how this is going to go. So just like with the Ocarina randomizer, I'm going to take a little time and talk about the things I've done to spruce up the game a little bit and make it more interesting. If you want to skip ahead to when I actually start playing the game, I'll leave a timestamp on the screen. Otherwise, if you want to hear what I'm going to talk about, here we go. So just like the original Majora's Mask game, the goal is still the same. I just have to defeat the bosses of the four temples and uh, get to the final day and go up to the moon and defeat the final boss there. Uh, I'd be cool if you could change how things are done like in the Ocarina randomizer, but for now it's just the original goal, defeat the four bosses, go up to the moon, defeat the final boss. But if you think it's going to be as simple as the Ocarina of Time randomizer, then boy howdy are you going to be in for a treat. Because the way this game works and how everything's on the three-day cycle, I'm going to be constantly managing uh, my time and having to go to places at specific times to check items. And even more so with how the game's mechanic works, there are some things I've got in the item pool that will reset every time I reset time. So I have to actually keep track of things as I'm playing. Like, I'm not sure if you can hear this, but... I actually have a clipboard on me because I have to take notes as I'm playing. You're going to have notes on the side of the screen uh, that I'm going to add in post so that you guys will know uh, what I'm doing as I'm playing. But for me, I actually have to have the notes with me because there is no way I'm going to remember everything off the top of my head. But uh, th that's the whole point. Who says I'm going to make things easier? This, this is just for a challenge. So you'll get the notes, but I'm going to have to be writing them down as I play. So if there's any points where I'm like a little slow in clicking text boxes, uh, that's why. Uh, so th most of the original items that you would expect to be randomized are randomized in this game, such as uh, key items, masks, bottles, uh, all that. Even the Ocarina songs too, excluding the Song of Time, which you automatically start with since that's how you save the game. Uh, I do have the tracker on the side of the screen, so you'll know what I have as I'm playing. Uh, but in addition to those items, I've also made it so that uh, the moon items that you can find, so the moon rewards, uh, dungeon keys, including boss keys and small keys, maps, uh, great fairy rewards, and shop items are also randomized into the item pool. And there are also... They're called mundane rewards, so they're like the consolation prizes from certain mini games that you play. Uh, their items are also in the item pool as well, so I have to be uh, extra vigilant in trying to find items because good items can even be on the consolation prizes. That's going to be a lot of fun. <laughs> and even the Ocarina songs, just like in the Ocarina uh, randomizer, the Ocarina songs are also randomly placed in the item pool as well, so. If I go to a place that normally gives me a song, I could get an item, and some places where I get items, I can get songs. So I have to be really careful there, especially because the Song of Soaring is also included in the item pool, and that is the Universal Warp song for anyone who has not played this game. So I really hope I can find it early. <laughs> Here's hoping. Um, now some items in this game, uh, how this game normally works is uh, finding an item usually gives you the item and then finding an item uh, in an earlier state will revert the item. I've set it so that everything works in a progressive manner so that uh, if I find a sword, it's automatically the uh, next tier up sword as opposed to the final sword. Uh, that way things won't get downgraded as I play and that's just to make things a little less of a headache. Um, and just so I can keep the challenge factor up, since I have played this game quite a bit, uh, I do have double damage set on as well. It's not quadruple damage, it's just double damage. I don't want to be dying every, like, five minutes. But I will be keeping a stock of fairies on me if I find them, because this game is notorious for, uh, damage. Although, I, I will say, I have actually beaten this game with a, a, a uh, three heart challenge without dying once, so I know it's possible. And there are some ice traps hidden in the pool as well. Not as chaotic as the Ocarina randomizer because sometimes if I'm in the wrong uh, wrong moment and 
I have the uh, Zora mask equipped and I open a chest, an ice trap could kill me in one shot. So I don't want that happening every, uh, every chest I open. And I've practiced with that. It's terrible. Um, but just in case you think I'm only making it uh, more and more challenging, I have done a few things to make things more fun, since this is the first randomizer I put up here. A uh, big one that I love doing whenever I do these is uh, the Fierce Deities Mask. Since I've randomized the moon rewards, the Fierce Deity Mask is included in the item pool, so I can find it anywhere. But even better, I've also set it to be equipped at any possible moment, not just in boss rooms since that's the original intention in the vanilla game. So if I get the Fierce Deity Mask, get ready to watch me break this game. It is awesome. Uh, but that's, of course, assuming I can find it. And there are a few skips, or um, a few skips in the same vein of Ocarina of Time, where if it's an incredibly tedious thing where I have to get a bunch of uh, items, then I've uh, reduced it so that I don't have to collect as many. Mostly, like... The, uh, the lakeside lab fish, for anyone who knows that heart piece in the original game, uh, normally needs like five or six fish to get the heart piece. In this one, I would just need one to get the item. And the Termina Bank, which can normally have 5,000 rupees max to get its final reward, will only need 1,000 rupees to get the last reward. And it can only hold 1,000 rupees, but really, if, you're, if you need more than 1,000 rupees in the bank, I question a lot of things. Uh, so there's that. And I'm allowed to store multiple temporary items as opposed to one. It's just kind of a, a optimization of this game so that I don't have to be really cautious about uh, finding items and losing temporary items. And one last big thing is the uh, Gossip Stones. So just like in Ocarina, you normally read them with the Mask of Truth, uh, which is a mask in this game. So they're set to be readable once I find the Mask of Truth. Uh, and I really hope I do find that, since the hints are very invaluable, and the Ocarina Randomizer proved that. So I'll be keeping an eye out for the mask, and hey, there's a little bit of a pun. Um, but I, I will really want to find that when I can. And that looks to be every major thing that I've taken care of here. There are a few um, minor... Uh, cosmetic changes, so like my tunic colors will be different. Uh, the uh, the low heart sound doesn't play when I'm at really low health because that's just annoying. Uh, the um, the enemy the minor enemy a tune that plays where it's just like a really tense uh, song uh, does not play because I really just like the music of this. Oh, pardon me there. I really just like the music of this game, so I've I've removed that so I can just keep listening to the music uh, throughout, and I'm sure everyone will like that too since I really like Termina Field theme. Uh, Terminus field theme, sorry there. Uh, and that seems to be pretty much it. Uh, maybe a few cutscenes got skipped as well, just because it, uh, the way things are set. But uh, I, I tried to keep this as close to the vanilla as possible, while still being able to say I'm trying to beat this as quick as possible. And I will have a... I'll do it the same way like I did before. Uh, I'll play for about an hour or so, and then... Uh, I'll take a break and then come back and uh, play it again. And I'm, I'll am i keep track of time like I did before. So there will be just some uh, time check at the end of every episode. So you know how long it's been taking me. But anyways, I think that's everything. So let's just, yep, everything seems to be in order. Uh, does my tracker still function? Yep. So, okay. I'll, I'll go more into my thought process of how I handle things here, since uh, there are a few things I have to keep in mind. But uh, how things are going to work right off the bat, uh, just in case I don't have enough time to explain it. My first, the first few things I do here, I kind of have a set path that I normally follow, because there are things that are time sensitive that I tend to check right off the bat. So that that's kind of the path that I'll be following. Uh, and you'll see here as I am just about to get started here. So let me just take a quick drink of water here. Oh man, this is going to be a lot of fun. Okay. Well, I'm not sure if I've met with a terrible fate because this is something I've been really looking forward to. So let's get started with the Majora's Mask Randomizer. In three, two, one, B. 
begin. Dawn of the first day. Hi, Clock Town. It's good to be back. Okay, so right off the bat, uh, you start as a human. Oh, this could be a good thing right off the bat. Hey, we start with a mask. Okay. Now, good thing with masks, they're permanent too, just like items, so I don't have to keep an eye on that. Um, so yeah, I have to... There are some things I'm doing right off the bat because I, I've, I path it out so that I can keep track of uh, time. So we come down here to the laundry pool and I collect the stray fairy for North Clock Town here. Nice. I love that little ricochet. There we go. So yeah, first thing I'm trying to do is get to 10 o'clock in the morning uh, for East Clock Town because there's a door that opens there for a very quick and easy check. Hello, cafe. Uh, okay, so here we are in the West Clock Town, and I do... I visit here for some shops, because this way I can see how many rupees I need. I did randomize the shops as well. And you're looking pretty good. So how many rupees am I going to need for you? Okay, so this is what I mean by uh, having to write down notes. Uh, oops, that's the wrong one. Just got to get my setup more organized here. Uh, so, yep. There's that. So the Great Bay Boss Key. So that, that'll be good to know. A Snowhead Small Key. Uh, there we go. Now these, uh, so the Sonata is 30. Uh, Cafe's Mask is 30, and the Stone Mask is 30. So I'll need 90 rupees to get those items, which is pretty good. Uh, let's go another shop here. Oh, you have a hook shot. That's important. That's necessary. And you are only 30 rupees. Circus Leader is 40. Okay, and the heart piece really isn't necessary, because I'm certain I'll find a bunch of heart pieces throughout. But 90 and 70, that's 160 rupees. That is really good. So, I will be trying to keep an eye on getting rupees here for a bit. The rupee game in the early Majora's Mask is uh, very heavy, I find. Okay. So now we go up here to North Clock Town. What do we got up here? That is... Oh, that's a map. That's an actual, like, uh, map that's in the lower uh, bottom right of the screen there. But only for a region of Termina. So I I don't know which map it is, but I'm going to get it. If I can even keep control of my... Uh, <laughs> jump a bit. Oh. Oh, man, this is not... Uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm better than this. Come on, me. There we go. Oh, come on. Yeah. It's... There we go. Made the jump. Yeah, better idea. Let's just do this. There we go. So what do we get? Oh, the map of Great Bay. That's that's good. All right. And then uh, we take the Stray Fairy over to the Great Fairy's Cave here. And one thing to note, and this tricked me up the first time I ever played this. There's a reward for being Human Link. And then there's a reward for being in a transformation mask, and that is another important item. Go fire arrows. So I have to remember to come back here, and I should also mark that too. I should. I have to remember to come back here when I find one of the transformation masks, that being the Deku mask, the Goron mask, and the Zora mask, and maybe the Fierce Deities mask too? I'm not sure. Okay. So now we're in East Clock Town here. Now, that's the house that I'll be going into over there. That's the mayor's residence. But that's at 10 o'clock when they open up. It's, everything in this game is time sensitive. So I have to I have to keep an eye on that. Oh my goodness. I cannot jump today. Hey, Gorman. Okay, let's just do this again since uh, I should be able to make this in time. Yeah, there we go. Now we just do two light jumps here, and then a roll jump. There we go. So yeah, there's a treasure chest hiding over here. We don't want to forget that. And what do we get? Oh, yeah, just like I said, there's going to be a bunch of hearts. 
Okay. So that's good. Oh, didn't mean to talk to you. Sorry. All right, so Gorman's already opened the door. So good, I timed, <laughs> mistakes aside, I timed that pretty well. Now it's just getting in here and uh, the mayor's on the left, the mayor's wife is on the right, who's, uh, she really wants us to locate her son. And normally she'd give us the cafe mask in order to help that, but uh, she's uh, got a different item this time. So what do we get? Well, I do need money, so thanks a lot. Because I, I really want that hook shot. That that solves a lot of my problems. So let's let's do what I usually do next, which is a little bit of exploration in Termina Field. Since uh, there are a few grottos in Termina that I have uh, mapped out that I normally do. So we just climb this pillar here. Hopefully the bomb chew over there doesn't get me. How close? Oh, that was close. <laughs> Second longer. All right, so now we're down here. And of course, first time, gotta get uh, the you got this item quote. But that's fine by me, because it gets, uh, gets rid of them for the rest of the game. And my random item is... Oh, well, that's gonna be a problem, because I don't have a bomb bag. I mean, Technically, I found it, and that's good to know, but I don't really need bomb chews so much. I need a bomb bag. Ah, uh, well. Can't win them all. Okay, and then we head over this way, because there is someone climbing a tree over here, because he's like, I see rupees in this tree. I really want to get them. Yep, so just over here. And I'm like, here, let me help you. The amount of times I have made him hurt his knee has actually made me feel bad. <laughs> but I need the money, and you'll forget this in a few days, so... Oh, yep. I'll take any money I can get, because I want to try to get all those items in the shop. That's normally how my first, uh, first day tends to go. It's just, uh, how much money do I need from the shops? Or for the shops? And then... Uh, get the things in the shops while I'm keeping an eye on what time of day it is in the uh, first day. So if there is something coming up uh, very shortly. Okay, that is a green potion drop. I don't really need those. Because the way it works in this game, there's six empty bottles. Uh, if you find the thing in the bottle itself, then you could get to keep the bottle. Otherwise, you only get a refill, which does not give you a bottle. So I want to look for things that actually give me the bottles. That's what I can keep. Uh, dungeon map would fall. Okay, well, it's an item. Uh, let's see if this is where. If I had the hook shot, this is where I could get the uh, the treasure chest that's up there. Because otherwise, I'd have to wait for magic beans. Okay. There we go. Well, that's not bad for money. Yeah. The uh, I'm gonna get the hook shot now. Oh, I can't wait to get the bunny hood or the Goron mask or the fierce deity mask. There's anything that helps speed me up. Okay. So, yeah, pretty soon I should make my way to East Clock Town. Because I can get another item check there. And that's pretty much all this uh, first cycle is. While finding things, I am trying to get... Uh, Okay, so this is what I can do here. I can use this to fill my money up, because, hey, I'll spend I'll spend 50 to get 100. That's what you call a good deal. Probably could have uh, spent a little and then uh, gotten the 50 rupee that way and made it a little bit more lucrative, but you know what? The hook shot is of higher importance. So let's start getting this here. Thank you. There we go, and I'll get the Circus Leader's Mask, because if I have to do Romani Ranch, that's just a good thing to have. Okay. So, all is good there. So, I, I guess while I have a little bit of a break here, because I'm gonna go... I'm gonna go do the East Clock Town thing here. And then... Uh, 
I'll, I'll go do one other thing too. Uh, it's the one of the buildings I just passed by actually, but this is a little more time sensitive, so I want to be uh, I want to be ahead of this. Man, you're just as bad as the graveyard in Kakariko. Okay. Good. I timed that just right. I timed that really well. So I just wait until Postman comes in. Because I actually have had this happen where I've been too early, but... So, yep. Anju, the innkeeper here, she's like, Oh, hey, do you have a reservation? Which I haven't given one, but sure, I've got a reservation. And I don't need to stick around for anything else since I don't have the cafe's mask or any means to get in there safely. So, we'll just skip that for now. All right, I'll go do the one last thing I was uh, going to do over here, and then maybe go hunt around uh, Termina Field a little bit, because I still do need some money. But we'll do this over here. So this is the Swordsman's School, and we're able to uh, take his uh, advanced course in swordplay, and we just have to get 30 points using highly advanced sword techniques, or in this case, uh, jump slash 10 times on these logs, since this is the only way to accrue 30 points. So whilst I'm doing this here, since this isn't uh, too intensive, my main goal right now, um, since, uh, term since this game is kind of a very progressive from the way it works, there are certain items I'm looking for that are uh, highly important for me to get right now to be able to get places. Conveniently, I found the hookshot already, and that's the most important one that I'm looking for. But the other things I'm looking for... Oh, hey, there's item number two! That's the other thing I was actually looking for. So, I have... <laughs> I found two of the big things I'm looking for. This is awesome. Come on, get me out of the door here. Oh, I think the lock hit box was still there too. Okay. Well, this is good. I found I found two of the four really good items I'm looking for. So, uh, the other two things I'm looking for right now, and there's going to be, it's going to be like groups of items that I'm looking for to be able to reach the end. But the big four that I'm looking for right now are the bow and arrow and the hook shot. So, I've already found the big two. And then there's Epona's Song, so the ability to ride my horse, since that land locks me from two places. And the Garo's Mask, which is uh, necessary to get to the last area of the game. Uh, I gotta be look I gotta be on the eye for those, so if I find any hints for those, I'll be really happy. Oh. Well, I don't need to do that. There's one thing over here, and I hope I can get there in time, because I can't do this at night. And as you can see, it's almost nightfall by the clock. So yeah, it's just over here. There we go. So yes, this I, this enemy here, if you remember from uh, Ocarina of Time. Oops, can't get too far away. Uh, so it's the P-Hat from Ocarina of Time. Oops. Turn so I can... Turn so I can get you. There we go. So as you can see there, getting hit once gave me two hearts of damage. That would have that would have killed me if I had been just a little bit sloppier. So, yeah. P had sleep during the night. Yes! Haha! <laughs> Bombs! Let's Make sure I mark the bow, too. But that's good. I'm getting a lot of good things right now. If I can find magic, that'd be great. But I'm, I'm finding a lot of good progression items. I just also hope I don't uh, <laughs> accidentally hit myself and get killed. Oh, yeah. I should not be here because that is a really bad enemy for me to deal with. Okay. Well, we're over here in... Milk Road. Now, that's Romani Ranch over there, and that's the Goron Brothers track. I can't really do anything here without uh, some other key items, so... Uh, just for now. Oh, thank you, Fairy. And... Hi, Tingle! Now, you'll see... You'll see this character 
uh, throughout uh, throughout the game. He's he normally sells you maps so that you can uh, find your way around places, but in this game, all these items are random. So what do we got? Um, oh, this is fun. So I'm gonna spend 20 rupees to get 50. Man, I love how money works in this game. And then I'm gonna talk to Tingle again and spend 40 rupees to get 50 rupees. Look at that, I recharged my wallet. This is awesome. Thanks for being a good businessman, Tingle. Okay. Well, not bad. I got a few things I can do in uh, Clock Town at night. I gotta remember, this. Is, whenever you play randomizers, there's always one thing you forget. For me, it's remembering that Guru Guru appears in the laundry pool, just on the south part of Clock Town. He just gives you a free item, so no reason why, no reason not to go and visit him. And normally, uh, because it's so easy to find him, he tends to have something good on him, or at least potentially good on him. So please have something good on you. I know I'm still looking for the key items that I, I need, but I would like some good things, please. I can also do this. Yep, so once again, another... Oh, just hooked it. Yeah, another chest just hiding up here. Oh, okay, that's good to know. So I have to actually write this down because this is an item that do that doesn't stay in my inventory uh, uh, when the uh, clock resets. There we go, so I've got that noted. So I can't do anything with this item. But if I have to do the uh, big side quest of the game, uh, that's good to know that that item is there. See, I told you I have to write down a lot of things. All right. All right, so Guru Guru. I can just skip all his text, but he's saying he feels guilty for stealing something, and uh, I'm going to give it to you. Okay, so that... It may have appeared in a bottle, but that is actually the uh, fairy drop that you can buy from the shop since those items are randomized into the pool as well. So that does not actually uh, give me a bottle. Which sucks, because I do need at least one bottle. Uh, there are six possible bottles, but I can only... Uh, I only need one specifically. So let's go buy a few things at the shop here. Uh, well, the Sonata of Awakening is the most important, so let's buy you. And the stone mask is also just as good, so let's get you. All right, everything has been clicked. So yeah, the stone mask lets me pass by enemies and they won't notice me, so I, uh, in case I get into a situation where it's like I need to be able to stealth my way through things and there will be a big uh, stealth area coming up in the later portion of the game, uh, that will be uh, very important. Uh, okay, if I time this right, and hopefully I don't die doing this, there is another chest I can get over here. It also helps that I got bombs too, so I can I can be a lot quicker with what I'm about to do. And we'll just put them there. Okay, yep, so... In a similar manner to the Pihak Grotto that I found in the south side, there is a Dodongo Grotto that I can find here on the north side. Okay, good. Yeah, so, in this game, a uh, really cool thing they did is they've got regular-sized enemies and they've got giant-sized enemies. As you can see here, these Dodongos are big. Uh, the big ones, uh, they do take a lot more health, but... They are also very... Oh, that was close. Uh, they're very lucrative when it comes to their rewards. So if you want one of the best early game rupee farming tricks, this is the way to do it. Now, you can normally find Dodongos in the uh, Termina Field area. Oh, hello. So that's another item. I hope the game's not telling me that I have to do the Anju Cafe side quest. <laughs> 
I mean, good to know that I'm finding the items should I need to, but I hope the game's not telling me I have to do it. That's just a really long side quest. Okay, but that did recharge my rupees again. Now, I only need to spend... I know I have to spend for sure the 60, or the, not 60, 30 rupees uh, to buy the uh, cafe mask, which I'm going to do. But there is one thing I'm about to do here in a little bit. Uh, it's not to do with that, it's just I wanted to open that way up, since I'll be visiting that way probably in the next little bit. Um... About to say, how much time do I got? Now, if you noticed in the. Oh, how do I want to time this? Because I can do the. I can do the bomber quest here now that I have a. Um. Actually, yeah, I can get it started here. Do the first two. And then I can do the rest as. I do the rest of the night here, since they only care about uh, 6 o'clock in the morning. So, yeah, this group of kids here, they're all like, Hey, you want to be a member of our club? Well, you got to go find all five of us by morning. And if you uh, find us, we'll give you a clue uh, to, uh, to our hideout. Now, uh, <laughs> Every time I pull out the hook shot, just look away for five seconds. I'm not trying to hurt, uh, stun these kids so I can catch them a lot easier. There we go. So, I can get the two kids here. And, uh, how much time do I got? I can maybe... Yeah, I've still got an hour. The thing I'm waiting for doesn't happen until midnight. So I've got... i got about an hour. I can go get the one kid that's over here. Right there. It's almost like he doesn't even move uh, from his spot. So I'll just stun you really quick. There we go. And now I can head my way back to North Clocktown. Man, the first part of the game is always about managing all these things you can get. Like, and it, it is consistent. I will say this though, that's the first time I've ever shown up back in North Clocktown and seen the kids there just be like, "Oh, you caught me. Usually I do all my business uh, catching the kids here in the first uh, visit to North Clocktown and then after that it's I never uh, uh, I, I never come back here halfway through and be like, I see the kids here. <laughs> okay, well, the event is about to begin. So this, this lady here, she is... Uh, uh, a proprietor of the bomb shop, and here she is just walking alone in the middle of night, uh, carrying her uh, new shipment of bomb bags, well, in the vanilla game. And then we get this prancing guy up here, clearly not suspicious at all, just walking right by her, and does the thing we clearly know he's about to do and attempts to steal it. So we just have to make him drop the bag. And he's just like, oh no, I'm gonna run all around and confuse you and then try to run away. Yeah, clearly the guard doesn't stop him, the kids don't attempt to do anything. Nope, he just runs away. But we did save the old lady's product, so we get a reward for our trouble. And it's... the Kamaros Mask! That's actually really handy. There's something I can... there's another thing I can do in West Clocktown now. All right, well, hey, let's go visit West Clocktown. Okay, so gotta pull out the mask here. I'm doing pretty good for items so far. Like, I know there's still a few key items that I'm I'm looking for, but I'm doing pretty well in getting things. So this, this mask's power lets me dance. Now, if I can actually aim it right and be like, hey, girls, let me teach you this dance. Now, I know this is done really out of order, but there's a person in North Clocktown who, with the Song of Healing that I don't have, uh, I heal his soul and he gives me uh, his essence in a mask, which lets me do his dance. And then I take that and show these uh, ladies here this dance. And they're like, thank you for showing us this dance. Please, uh, please take this reward. And one of the girls just disappeared there. Okay. 
So here we go. What do we get? Oh, it had to be when I had full rupees. Oh well, I made them happy. That's all. That's all that matters. All right. Okay. Now that oh shows up as something arguably even worse. There we go. So now I'll just come here and buy Cafe's Mask. So that way I have it in my inventory so I don't have to worry about coming back. There we go. And that way if I have to do the uh, Cafe side quest, I have the item that starts it. Okay. Uh, let's... There's nothing else I can do right now. Uh, yeah, let's get some rupees uh, deposited in here now. That way, if I find more rupees, I'm okay. Okay, he's like, well, uh, here you go. And <laughs> apparently his bank vault can uh, defy the laws of time, because every time I reset time back to the first day, I still have all the rupees in there. I'd like to know how that technology is possible, sir. Okay, well, I do still have two bomber kits to catch, and not a whole lot of time to do it. So, there we go. So yeah, that the Goron to my side here, if you get the reservation, uh, that's who would normally take the reservation anyway. Oh, yeah, let's try this. Let's see if you... So if I can just get him... There we go. It is so handy having the hookshot right now. So we'll just stun you so you don't run away. All right. Well, I have... Uh, I have now joined the club officially. They give me a hard piece. Well, that's good. And they're like, y uh, work with the bomber's notebook that we're totally not uh, giving you. So... Five... Four... Three... There we go. So I've got the code written down and I can reference it whenever I need to. But let's go visit the, uh, let's go visit the bomber's hideout because there, I can actually do a few things there. Uh, okay. So what's the code? Two, five, four, one, three. There we go. We are in. Go, oh, just passing under the Clock Town waterways. But first things first, we're just gonna go over here. If I can hug the corner. Mostly because we got that Skulltula there and I just wanna not get hurt. Oops. And up we go. Oh yeah, I burned a whole lot of bombs with the Dodongos, that's why. But it's good that I got the bomb bag now, so. Uh, having an explosive is another requirement that I forgot to uh, mention. S uh, similar manner to uh, similar manner to the opponent song and Garo's mask that I'm looking for. Uh, however, the explosive can be substituted in the m most major location case uh, if you have either the fire arrows or the ability to transform into a Goron. But having explosives now is still a good thing. So let's just do a little hop hop here, get up here. So now we are gonna visit the observatory, one of my favorite places to visit in this game because uh, whoever designed the music for this place, uh, you're awesome. And also I can get some rupees too. Not that I, well, if I do have the ability to get uh, some shops, uh, I will need some rupees now that I think about it. And you are... I don't need you. Well, I say as I nearly died the one time, but I don't really need that. Uh, now, there is another thing I can do uh, looking through the telescope, because uh, that hard piece replaces an item called the Moon's Tear. And that's that's a free item, but it's not necessary for me to beat the game, so I don't really need to get it. 
but there is a um, there's a Deku scrub, well business scrub, that uh, you can uh, find through the telescope, and you see him go into a grotto that's in uh, Termina Field, and by doing that, you can then go and find him, and he's like, hey, you found my secret spot, now I have to move, but if you don't tell anyone about this, I'll give you this item for 150 rupees. And if you don't like it, then you can uh, knock it down to 100. But if you uh, don't accept his item, he'll flee right there, and he won't show up for the rest of the three-day cycle. So I'm only going to visit that if I find the adult wallet. Okay. Uh, let's go do what I normally do next. And that is take a visit to the Southern Swamp. Actually, I just remembered with Tingle, uh, he does appear in North Clocktown, but only during the day. So I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go scout out his items real quick here as we get dawn of the second day. Well, only 48 hours to go until the moon comes and crashes and dooms us all. All right. Hello, Tingle. Come on down. There we go. Now, how he normally sells his maps is he sells a map of the place that he's in for cheap, and then he sells something uh, for the next region at a slightly higher price, which in this case is a very, 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 very important item. So hold your horses, Tingle. I'll be back for uh, a bonus song in a moment. Give me my rupees. So this is good. Other than the Garo's Mask, I have access to uh, virtually uh, every major location. So, yep. Let's go. Uh, we'll just go 60 rupees here. Okay. Uh, this way I have a, a few extra rupees on me since I will be doing a little shopping coming up, but it's not a lot. Okay. All right, Tingle. I want that. Uh, I want that song. So, <laughs> if I can hit you, there we go. There we go. So, give me the song. Oops. Uh, no, not that. I want that one. There we go. So, bonus song has been marked. Now, I want to check here. It doesn't say bottle of milk, it just says milk. So is this a bottle or a refill? Yeah, you had your bottle filled with milk. Does that actually give me my first bottle? Nope, that's just a standard refill. Okay, so I don't have to worry about that. And thank goodness it was only for five rupees. Okay. Now that I've taken care of that, and that I have a bonus song, yay. Let's now go to the south. Since there is something I do there that is uh, hinged on it being day two. And I'll explain more of that when we get there. But first... Oh, so my ocarina randomized into a harp. Eh, I've had funnier, but I've had worse. Hi, Epona. There we go. Now I've got fast travel. And convenient farming through grass if I need to. Alright, so there's a few things I can get here. So we'll just kill these. Now I'm just gonna park over here for a second. Because I can look up. Oh, I need that, I need that now. Die, you bats. I'm not having you get in the way. Oh, man, this is bad. I, I'm, a, I'm as terrible in aim as I was uh, with the Goron Archery. <laughs> or, not Goron Archery. There we go. Should really only have to take care of... There we go. There we go. Yeah, the bats will actually actively get in your way if you try to climb it, especially the one that's perched on the vine. 
So, uh, best to have, you have to have some long range ability to shoot them down. But give me the Goron Mask. There, that opens up a lot. And we got a convenient grotto over here as well. So, another free item. Man, I'm just, I'm making a lot of progress right now. And money, that's good. Because I am gonna, I'm gonna check Tingle again here too. Oh, maybe I'll get those arrows on me just in case. I was, I was firing a lot of blanks earlier. Okay. Just have you get out of the way. And, man, I've been firing a lot of arrows at Tingle's Balloon lately. Thankfully, I don't really have to uh, keep an eye on him. And it's just a red ruby. Okay. All right, well, that's good. I can keep an, I can keep a hold of these rupees for now, since I uh, probably will be doing a little shopping here uh, coming up. Okay, and that's just a heart piece. That, that rooftop item is almost always a heart piece. I did have it be the ice arrows once, but I, I swear it's almost always a heart piece. Okay. We're gonna just pop up here real quick, since this I'm gonna introduce to the uh, Deku Scrub trading quest. So normally, oh, bottle of gold dust, that's an important item. Uh, swamp Deku Business Scrub. Gotta keep an eye on that, because so that means this is locked by the Deku Mask. So. How this works. Oh, hey, I'm Goron. And I don't drown in this water because it's too shallow, thankfully. Uh, so how the, the business scrubs work. Oops, that's maybe not a good thing. Uh, there's a huge chain of items you trade to the Dekus throughout all the regions. There's five in total. And each one you'll, you'll give the deed to the next one over. But you can only give the deed uh, to the Deku if you're a person of a previous location. So, the first one, the first one is just like, hey, uh, if you have a moon tier, I'll give you this deed. Um, and that's in Clock Town. And then that one there is like, oh, you have the land deed, I'll give you the swamp deed. And, okay, small, and if that is that, that's probably the spin attack. Oh, those are all good items. I'm gonna have to, hope I have some rupees on me. Um, so yeah, I, I have to give the deed as the location prior, but you can only buy an item from them if you are the, uh, if you are part of the location you're in. So the, uh, the Deku can only buy the item from the Deku scrub there. The Goron can only buy the item from the mountain Deku scrub. The Zora can only buy from the Oceanside Deku scrub. I have magic now. Yes. Oh, that's so good. Ooh, wow. Yeah. It's all, I'm, I'm all green. I wonder what it'll be like when I get uh, uh, powered up, or uh, infinite magic. Okay. Now, this is gonna seem weird, because that monkey usually leads you through this place with a different path every day, but I've gone through this so many times that I've actually memorized this layout. As long as I don't get hit by all these turtles here. And if you recognize there, that's one of the witches, uh, boss of the spirit temple. So these two in this game, uh, they work in the swamp here. One as a uh, potion seller, the other as a boat tour guide. Uh, but she got injured by the skull kids, so we have to find some way to help her. Which would require me to get a bottle of red potion. Maybe blue works, I don't know, but it's almost always red potion. So normally this is where you uh, get attention of her sister who's worried about her and looking for her. And she'll be like, oh, you found her, but she's injured? Uh, here, take the red potion. But in this case, I don't actually have that. So, um, sorry, I got a, I got a bolt. But that does return her to the shop. So, I can now uh, peruse her items. And hopefully, uh, things I'm looking for are not too expensive. 
I know that, like, she sells, uh, potions. Uh, blue potion being the most expensive, uh, red and green being the least expensive. Okay, so, yeah, she's like, Oh, you must have consumed the potion, so take that to her. Alright, well, that takes care of that, so let's see. Alright, so that's one, uh... That's something I, I gotta keep a note of. And Postman Hat is 10, Spin Attack is 20. Well, good, I can buy both of these. And that's something I can't mark on my tracker, but I have the Spin Attack. And the Postman's Hat. Which all this does is unlock the ability to look in post boxes, and that only gets me one item. But, it's good to have, and I'm checking things off as I go, so, all good. So if I can just keep an eye on... Ooh, that's a cool energy pattern. Yeah, I've also... I also randomized the energy pattern around uh, Link as he does his various things. So, that's like a blue-green mega mix. That's pretty cool. So, hi, Epona, don't really need you right now. Well, maybe I do, because my ability to pilot my Goron is <laughs> difficult. I'll do the mini- I'll do the archery minigame here at a later point. And watch, I say that, but it'll have an item I need. But I'm kind of just doing a lot of quick hunting right now. I'll do more of the mini games on the later part. Like, even the- even the treasure minigame that I could do in Clock Town, I've skipped right now. But I'm just trying to get to places and get maybe get some really quick items. So let's go. Uh, let's head up north. Now the nice part with having a Pona is, is I can also go to the west. But it's much more efficient in the west if I have the Zora Mask. So I'm going to keep an eye for the Zora Mask as I'm going about places. So, oh, conveniently, it gives me a little magic. Yeah, I'll be, this will be draining magic from me like crazy, so hopefully I can get some refills. But I can go up the ramps, no, I missed. Oh well, Goron just makes this so much more efficient. But if there's one thing I really want to get soon, it's the Song of Soaring. Since that way, that way I'll be able to warp to all of the um, owl statues that I have been swiping at. So this is the part here where you need either the Goron or an explosive. So, hey, I meet that uh, requirement. And, oh, that's good. Helps me out. Okay, here we are in the North Mountain Village. So first things first... Let's just get you clicked. That way I've got easy access back here if I find the song. And, well, I don't need the fairy. Don't even have a bottle. All right. And conveniently, I do have uh, some good items to help me out here. Uh, let's not fall. There. So. There is a hidden grotto here. So let's go and see what this one has. And... Please be good. Well, okay. I might have to do some buying here when I get to the Goron City, so... Eh, just maxing out my rupees, I guess. Now, since I do have magic, thank goodness... So do that. It's, it's. I'm glad that I can hit stationary targets. Oh wow, it's nearly. Uh, it's nearly nightfall. Time does fly when you're having fun. Okay, so in we go. Now this is a hot spring water grotto, but I really don't need any hot spring water for things that I'm doing. Just need to get in behind this boulder here for one treasure chest. 
Oh, okay, heart piece is a heart piece. Last thing I want to do is die. Just don't hurt me. Thank you. Okay. So there's the mountain scrub, and since I am a Goron, I can actually buy the item from the scrub if I need to. Uh, oh, just a piece of heart, so don't have to worry about uh, buying his item, thank goodness. Now one thing that buying the uh, scrub uh, deeds does is gives you access to an item, which is just a blue rupee up there, so I don't need to do that at all. Now I'm just going to go into the Goron city here. Normally a gatekeeper helps you get in there, but if you're already a Goron, then you're fine. Now how, now this side quest here, there's a Goron infant that is really awesome because he gives me the Zora mask. Um, oh, that's so good. Find the Deku mask and I'm set. Uh, but this uh, crying infant here, he's, uh, uh, he really misses his, I think it's his dad, who's gone off to the temple to try to solve the issue of all the snow that's here. But, um, uh, he, the, if you find the dad, uh, iced over in Clock Town, or not Clock Town, uh, Snowhead here, he'll teach you a melody to, uh, help the, uh, help the child go to sleep, which is the song you would use to access the uh, temple in this region. That's actually another thing, too. Uh, the uh, There are uh, five ocarina songs that I need to find to help me access places. Uh, I already found the Sonata of Awakening, so that'll help me access the Deku Temple. I uh, still need to find the Goron Lullaby, the New Wave Bossa Nova, the Oath to Order, uh, which is for the final uh, trek up to the moon, and the Elegy of Emptiness, and then I'll be able to access all of the uh, dungeons. So I'm still looking for those. That's kind of the that's kind of the next thing I'm hunting for after my uh, really quick uh, access to everything. Uh, how much do you sell for? Only your 40 rupees, but I don't need bomb shoes. You know what? Since I'm here. We'll get the heart container. Just in case, because, you know, chances are I'm probably going to die soon uh, to something silly. Okay. Now let's, uh, let's play a little guessing game here. So the reason I lit all those torches there is it starts this chandelier spinning, but there is a... There's an item hidden in one of these five chandeliers, which I take to a hungry Goron, and he'll give me an item, which is convenient because it's on the way back. I just gotta figure out which one it is, and it can be anywhere from immediate to, uh, I have to break all five of them. So let's see how this works. Number two. I love the day when you can get I love the days when you can get it on the first shot. Uh, oh, it's not. So I'll try to fall over here. Oops. Yeah, now I gotta time it. This should work. There we go. Three attempts, not too bad. Okay. Well, now I gotta take this uh, giant piece of rock sirloin back to the entrance of the mountain village, because that's where that Goron was. And then I'll be making a quick roll back here because there is uh, something I can get. Well, there's a few more things I can get, uh, courtesy of having the Lens of Truth, and I really don't want to pass that up. So, I'll, uh, I'll have to now I have to slowly trudge this thing back. So let's uh, let's think of a game plan here while I'm doing this because I'm finding a lot of good items. Uh, but I guess the big thing I'm looking for now are the uh, the temple songs. So already got the sonata. I still need the other ones. Uh, then after that, I guess the get out of my way. I don't want to. Don't want to deal with you. There we go. 
So, yeah, then after that... Well, I'm still looking for the Deku Mask, too. That's important. Uh, the other two elemental arrows I'm looking for, because I would need those to do... Uh, I need those to do things in the temples. Conveniently, since I've got the bow and arrow and the fire arrows, I'm, uh, I'm all set for the first two dungeons. And then after that is finding the other boss keys. I don't know how long it'll take me to find those, but uh, yeah, we'll see how that goes. That'll be the last major thing I'm looking for. Okay. Well, so yeah, this this uh, Goron here, he normally gives you the Don Garros mask, but now he gives me a oh, purple rupee. I mean, that's fine, because once I'm finished here, I'll probably go visit uh, Great Bay, since I have Opponent's Song and the Zora's Mask. There's a lot of things I can get there, too, which includes a quick visit to the Zora shop. So, that'll get me... That'll get me access to a lot of things. I gotta say, this first cycle... This first cycle has been treating me really well. Oh, I'm out of magic. That's fine, I can still roll about. Might need to find a quick magic jar here. Oh. No, let me punch you. There we go. And ah, no, you're only you're only money. Just give me. I just need magic. Oh my goodness! This is why I, this is why I don't punch things with gore on. It is so much harder to uh, deal uh, with everything. Well, I guess I can do this. So yeah, the uh, if you remember Kabora Kabora from previous game, uh, he's like, uh, unless you have the courage to face uh, danger head on, you will never succeed. So he tests your courage by asking you to jump across a bunch of invisible platforms. Conveniently, he marks the uh, he marks the way with his feathers. And normally, I'd use the lens of truth, but uh, I don't have magic, so I can't actually use the lens. But that doesn't stop me from getting over here. So let's see how this works. I got three things I can get in here. There we go. Yep, invisible spider that would come down and get you. All right, item one. Oh, is that a refill? Okay, that may have not been a bottle, uh, but that is a refill of Chateau Romani, which gives me infinite magic for the three-day cycle. A very important item. And if I ever find a bottle and need magic, that's where I'll go. Nope, small key to Great Bay. I'm starting to wonder if... Uh, I'm starting to wonder if Great Bay is... Uh, going to be the first temple that I do. It's a good thing I came here, because this is giving me a lot of important items. There we go. Got my magic. And just 50 rupees. Okay. Uh, Lens of Truth. There we go. So now I can use this to escape. Since now I can see the paths. This is incredibly handy. And there we go. Now I'll just do one last... Oh my goodness, my aim is terrible. There we go. So I'll do one last thing here, which will kind of take care of all the things I have to worry about uh, whilst I'm here. And this is the uh, Powder Keg Master. Now, in the vanilla game... When you normally get the powder keg, uh, that's what when you get the license, it gives you a powder keg. 
Uh, but the ability to get powder kegs is dictated by your ability to uh, have actually found the powder keg check. So just because this guy uh, will pass uh, pass me uh, for wielding powder kegs does not mean I can actually buy powder kegs. I have to actually find the one lone powder keg. Or maybe there's a second one I can find somewhere? I'm not sure. I, it's been a while since I've actually looked into it. But I have to actually find a powder keg from a location, and then I'll have the ability to pick up powder kegs for whenever I want. But I'm still going to pass his test, because that is another item I can check. And all I need to do is carry this humongous explosive, which, to be fair, if I uh, if it explodes on my face, it would probably kill me right now, uh, given my uh, double damage. And I gotta carry it up to a giant boulder that's up there, and if I can blow up that boulder, I pass the test. Now, I don't know uh, how good the item will be, but... You, you kind of gotta, you kind of gotta do things as you as you come across, because like I could, well, I could have extreme difficulties picking up this powder keg. And it also looked like that clipped way more into my arms there. Kind of did. Wonder if I messed up the hitbox uh, when I was going to pick it up that one time. So I'm gonna stand far away. And blow up the boulder. So, way to go, me. I, uh, I have passed the test. I can go claim my reward. Just provided I don't get hit. Because that would be bad. That would be bad news, Gorons. Alright, so I think this is the quicker way. Just go right through the intersection here. Just like that. Doesn't matter about you. There we go. Yeah, okay. There we go. So, so thanks for the test. You give me the Fierce Deities Mask. Heck yes! Oh, now I've got, now I've got the thing I can break the game with. This is awesome. So glad I did the test. Now I'll, I'll, I'll do, I'll do some displaying of the fierce deity's uh, ability to break the game here in a bit, because it is, uh, it is more efficient for me to go through this uh, area as a Goron because of the ability to roll. But once I get into uh, Termina Field proper, I can show off just how. Uh, I can show off just how broken uh, Fierce Deity Link is. So here we go. I'm not gonna go up to Snowhead right now, and I don't have the Song of Healing, so I can't visit the Cliffside Grave. Let's go. Make some magic. Really wish I could have gotten that Chateau Romani, but uh, oh well. Man, this is awesome. Okay, so I'm gonna do something here. Since I will be needing Epona, I'm just gonna call Epona now. Dot. Oh, wow! There's a tech play. Apparently, Epona moving forward, even if I'm not on her, does, uh, <laughs> does strike the hitbox. Yeah. Okay. There are a few treasure chests I can get over here now, courtesy of having the Zora Mask. As we are on the dawn of the final day. There's even a few more things in Clock Town I can do uh, now that it's the final day. But, first things first... Just a quick visit to uh, Great Bay. There we go. There we go. And there's a lot of underwater chests that I can only get as Zora Link. Oh, well, free shield. 
Okay. Just this way I can bring Epona with me wherever I need to go. And there is a grotto over here I can quickly visit as well. Also convenient now that I have the Zora Mask. There we go. And we got these guys down here, the Bio Deku Babas. Oh, just a heart piece. Don't need you. All right. Now I just have to use Epona to get over this easily climbable wall. And we'll be in Great Bay. Why did I can just aim myself right? There we go. Hello, Great Bay. And as you can see there, because I found the map to Great Bay earlier, I do have the mini-map on display. Now, because I don't have the Song of Healing, I can't help Mikau over there. Just sad, but I've already got his mask, so... Uh, I'm not going to try to explain that. Okay. Uh, let's go... Let's go do some things over here real quick. There we go. So over here, the base. We have a like-like that's at the bottom of the waterfall here. Nope, not gonna do that. To actually get down there. And I can conveniently shoot Oh, well, not bad. I hit one of the bone fish. Now, what item do you have for me? That looks like a bow upgrade. Well, why not? There we go. So I have upgraded now to the large quiver. Is that the right spot? Nope. Completely wrong side. Uh, oh, wow. That was a lot of recoil there. Sent me about right back to where I started. Come on. Oh, wrong button. Seemed like there was a lot of, uh, a lot of pressure there from the waterfall. Okay. Now we got some easy treasure chests here, up here I can grab. Just do that here real quick, since there's not much. Ooh, and the ground's rumbling too. The moon's getting close. Now if I can just climb up a log. Uh, okay. It's not that one. Or is it? No. Yeah, so I gotta climb, climb this tree here gets me up to here. Now here's a fun one for you. There's a chest over here you're normally supposed to get with the Deku Flower, but you can reach it with the hook shot. But you can only stay on the platform if you hook the side of the chest. And I conveniently landed on top of it. Oh, well. Bigger bomb bag. Finding a lot of, uh... Finding a lot of key items here. Now let's see, uh, let's see if I get falling damage. Yep. So apparently I was falling down fast enough that that gave me falling damage. And now that I think about it, if I don't aim this proper, I could actually, uh... I think I'm gonna eat this. Yep. Okay. I'm not gonna do the... I'm not gonna do the uh, beaver race uh, right now, since that will take a little time. And I am trying to kill a little time before the uh, final 12 hours. So I'm just going to uh, do a quick visit to, uh, it's going to be to Zora Village over there. And then I'm going to make my way back to uh, Clock Town to do the last few things I can do. Which, uh, there we 
go. And then once I do those last few things, that'll be the end of this first cycle. There we go. So another convenient grotto hiding over here. Let's see what you give me. Please be something good. Oh, hello! Boss key number two. Uh, okay, just getting my notes here. There we go. So now I'll remember that for uh, later. But that's good. I found two of the four boss keys. It's gonna be uh, it's gonna be fun to find out which boss key is gonna take me forever to find because that's how uh, things seem to go for me every time I play. And hopefully I'll find them really quick. Cause like I could get lucky and like I'll find them so quick that I don't have to really spend a lot of time on the temples. Okay, well, and the compass for Stone Tower. Yeah, dungeon maps and compasses are, uh, they stay with you throughout uh, time travel, but they don't, uh, boss keys don't, which I really wish they did, but oh well. Perfect landing this time. All right, I'll go more into the Zora stuff later, but there are things I can do here. So let's... Let's first go visit the shop. If I can, if I can aim at the door. Silver, hard piece, and 50. Okay, nothing needed there. All right, next, let's go. And visit, uh, the thing with the Zoras in this game is that they're actually a band group. And Conveniently, the character that I am masquerading as right now is one of the members of the group, so I can I, I can get into their rooms. Um, what do we got here? That's a red rupee. And what do you sell? And you also sell a red rupee, so I have no need for you outside of Trade Quest. Um, okay, so that's that room. Now we'll visit in this room here. So this is the band leader's room, and he's busy trying to make up a song here. If you were to do some of the side quest stuff with Azora here, you'll you'll figure out the song to play. But he doesn't want you to play the song as Azora. So, oops, I messed that up already. There we go. So, yes, I have played this game enough that I remember the 60 notes off the top of my head. But he only accepts the song if you play it in something that's other than Zora Link, which is a brilliant twist on the puzzle. And because of that, he now has had his inspiration, and he gives you a reward. Okay, it's not a super important song, but it's good to get. I was kind of hoping that was the song of Soaring, but... <laughs> Oh well, can't win every single one. Actually, taking a look at my health there, maybe that hard piece wasn't oh, wouldn't be such a bad idea before I have to travel back. Okay, but one last thing here, and this is this kind of has to play into the mundane reward uh, thing that I do. Uh, you do get a normally get a small reward for lighting these uh, two torches up here in the rafters. So, lights these torches here, and then he's like, hey, you lit the lights? Here, take this. Oh, hey, well, I don't have to go buy the heart piece. Okay, well, time is nearly approaching the end. So, I'm gonna go start making my way back to uh, Clock Town proper. The last thing I need to do would take place at... Uh, 10 p.m. and conveniently it's because I helped save the old lady from the thief so it's one last check for me to do there we go take that uh, and then once it hits uh, 10 o'clock uh, and I've checked the last item that's the last thing I need to do and then I don't have to worry about Oh, it's the Zora whistling guitar. 
I wonder what the other two are, since I haven't checked yet. Okay, hello, Epona. And now, this way I have Epona with me, since she is still she was still at the waterfall. But there is an owl statue I need to hit by the lab. So I'm gonna go do that really quick, just get the statue so I don't have to worry about coming back here again. If I find the song soaring. And then uh, I'll start making my way back to Clocktown proper. There we go. Now I'm getting my uh, my jumping ability figured out. Okay. And this time I'm just gonna burn your balloon. That is the fourth time I have shot him down. As you can see, there's Mikau drifting there, but I still can't do anything. And nothing for the trouble, so. There we go. And now that I figured that out, let's head back. Well, actually, there there's two things I just thought of I can check once I start making my way back. But there's another thing over here I need to do. Well, two things, actually, so, hey, the fun never ends. Okay. Don't need you to do that, Epona. So first I go in here. I can aim my rolls. Uh, Romani's mask. Okay, I need to make a note of that. Uh, since how you get... Uh... How you get into the uh, uh, Clock Town bar is with the Romani's mask there. But in order to get that Romani mask, uh, let me just finish my note here. There we go. In order to get that Romani mask, I need to bring back a pictograph of the pirates from the Pirate Fortress. Which, I don't have the pictograph box yet, so I I can't even do that. But uh, I have to make a note of that or else I will forget. Alright. And I have upgraded to the Razor Sword, so I do have a stronger sword now. Now, cool thing with this randomizer, because it's hard to predict uh, how things go with uh, uh, time change back and forth. Uh, it's set up so that the Razor Sword just never dulls. I have now just permanently upgraded my sword to the next stage. There's one more stage with the Gilded Sword, which I think is my favorite sword in all of Zelda media. Uh, but I have to find that upgrade first before I get it. So for now, I will make do with my Razor Sword. Although, to be fair, I have the Fierce Deity Mask, which is one of the best swords in the game. So I really don't have to worry too much. But I am going to go do uh, one thing over here. Uh, I have to go visit... It's on the east side of uh, Clock Town. Uh, and it's only because I have the Hookshot and uh, the Goron Mask. I wouldn't be able to do these two uh, things otherwise. I'll just get going there, since that does seem to kill a lot of my momentum. Uh, but one is a chest on top of a pillar that I need to hook shot to. There we go. And the other is a boulder that I need to break, uh, but it can only be broken with the Goron's fist. Uh, and it can, uh, in a similar manner to the uh, Megaton Hammer from Ocarina of Time. Oh, did not mean to do that. I've also now been afflicted with uh, Jinx. So. I, as long as I'm glowing blue, I cannot pull out my sword. Which is a very interesting uh, uh, status affliction. Here we go. Just Oh, yep, I've been jinxed, so I can't even think about doing that. So don't even bother. I can punch at least. Thank goodness. Uh, so I just realized I had the mask chained to the hotkey, and I still equipped it. So I guess some habits still uh, still exist, since it's been ages since I've played <laughs> vanilla uh, Majora's Mask, and I have to equip the masks for everything. Yes! So glad I remembered to come here. Okay, so that's the 
that's the ocarina tune that lets me get into the great bay temple so uh conveniently now and i don't really need a pona right now uh conveniently now i have all of if, if i can not get hurt i conveniently have all of the tools i need there we go just get out of my way I conveniently have all of the tools I need to access the Great Bay Temple. And I can even make a lot of progress in it, too. I could probably, with the uh, the Fierce Deity Mask, I could even break the temple. All right. Ooh. Oh. However, that is, uh, that is another thing for me to keep in mind. There we go, I've got that noted. And now, because I really don't have much else to do, say hello to Fierce Deity Link, who is basically a giant. And because he's a giant, he moves fast. Not as fast as Goron Link, I think, but he moves fast, and I like it. Okay. As you can see, he towers over the doors. Okay. So, yep, everyone's evacuated now because the moon is very close to uh, falling onto the town, but that does leave the rooms open. And conveniently, after finding the room key, that does let me access a few chests. Yes! Now I can access, uh, uh, what is it? Uh, Ikana Valley. And that's every uh, first uh, first stage important item that I've been looking for. So if I can find the Goron Lullaby, the Elegy of Emptiness, or the Oath to Order. Ooh, that's another... Uh, that, that one would be harder for me to find, so I don't really need to take a note of that. So that is... So that's that. Now, hilariously enough, I could do the treasure chest game, but I'm going to leave that for the next cycle. Since I will have to do... I'm probably going to have to do a lot of mini-game stuff. Uh, because the ability to do the mini-games does uh, not require a whole lot of items. So, they do tend to have... Ooh, Don Garrow's Mask. Hopefully I don't need that one, since that one is very time-consuming. But hopefully, uh, on the next three-day cycle, I can do a bunch of mini-games and uh, get their items. Because uh, uh, other than needing the access to bow or bombs, a lot of them are really, uh, really early to do. So I would not be surprised if they have uh, items attached uh, to them that I'm looking for. And there's even one of those that I'm absolutely dreading. I, I think I made a brief mention of this in Ocarina, but my least favorite N64 Zelda minigame is in this game. And I'll go more into why I hate it uh, when I have to do it. I'll just keep things a little suspenseful, I guess. But yeah, there's the Deku minigame, there's Honey and Darling Shop, there's the Treasure Chest Shop, there's the two archery minigames. Uh, there's the Goron, or uh, not the Goron, the Gorman Brothers racetrack. I can race with a Pona. So there's a lot of things I can do on the side. But anyways, what does uh, the Curiosity Shop have here? And you are not needed. Yeah, he still says it's the All Night Mask. The text just hasn't been changed. Okay. Well, that's great. I found a whole lot of things. There are Still at least like one or two things that I'm looking for still, but that was a very, very productive uh, first three-day cycle. So now I'll just play the Song of Time here, since this will reset everything back to the very first day, just as if I was leaving uh, the clock tower. And there we go. So everything's back to normal, things aren't as doomsday, and pause. There we go. So that, I'm, now I'm, I'm oh man, I clearly need to take a break here, since I, I did kind of go over time 
quite a bit. I wanted to get the whole first cycle done in the first bit there, and I just kept finding things to do. So I'll, uh, I'll, I'll take a break here, and then when we resume the next time, I'll, fig I'll figure out a game plan. I'm probably going to do some mini games since I have the uh, ability to use a lot of items. And hopefully that'll get me a few more items that I can use. And then I'll probably start doing some exploration in the, uh, in the areas I need to uh, start getting to. But anyways, uh, thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this uh, first part of the Majora's Mask Randomizer. I certainly know I did. And hopefully you'll look forward to future parts to come. So uh, thank you very much for watching. Take care, stay safe, and have a good day. Hey.